and Trump have played a critical role in driving investor interest and demand. Crypto has been on fire lately with Bitcoin uh, quickly racing up to that 89,000 mark. Is it still an investable asset? Well, we knew just the man to ask. We're going to bring him onto the show, Mr. Craig Bellanos. He's the CEO and co-founder of the Wealth Manager Group in Chicago. Uh, we talked off air. You, you've, you've got some. You said, I don't have any. I mean, full disclosure. Uh, but uh, you must be smiling from ear to ear now that this thing's taken off. But it wasn't without some uh, bumps along the way, shall we say. Well, you know, I don't know that it's a investable asset. I think it's a tradable asset and it's a storage of value. Let me make that distinction, Scott. Storage of value and a trade. An investment has to have some underlying value, some earnings, some component that you can evaluate. Clearly, this does not. But the story is, everybody knows this administration is essentially crypto friendly. I think you've got people like SEC Chairman Gensler who are worried they're going to lose their job. He's obviously brought a lot of enforcement against the crypto industry. Mm -hmm. But clearly, uh, based on some of the things I saw in Mar-a-Lago, we're going to mine crypto crypto in America. We're going to own crypto in America. Crypto is going to be American. We'll have to see where this thing goes. But this thing has shot up like a rocket ship straight to the moon. We're going to be at 90,000 before you know it. I think we might have touched it intraday. I got to check the charts. Yeah, well, I mean, it's backed up a little bit, but you're right. It's There's a lot of euphoria that surrounds it. And, and uh, one of the things that was sold to me on it, which I did like, was the fact that um, it's it's a hedge against inflation, right? Uh, or at least it's seen to be that way. But it was also going to be outside the government purview. But, you know, as more and more days go off the, the calendar, uh, the government, mainly the IRS when I talk about the government, they want to know, right? Because they want to be able to tax it. And they have been as of late, correct? Yeah, when you file your personal 1040, there is a line item right on page one where you need to attest, legally attest, whether or not you are buying and selling any form of a virtual currency, a.k.a. a cryptocurrency. And when we talk about things like a strategic national crypto stockpile and everything else, it's just going to mean this. The government is going to get further involved in something that used to be outside of the purview right. of, quote, unquote, the man. It's interesting to see how things change. Yeah, because that was one of the big deals that they kind of sold it on early on in its in its life uh, lifestyle. So, um, one other thing I wanted to kind of you know it is it it will be a finite product, but right now there are still people mining Bitcoin, right? And so that is um, they're they're going through the uh, algorithms to pull Bitcoin to the fore. Can you explain to the viewers real quick uh, a better example of how someone might mine for Bitcoin? Well, you know what? I am not a miner of the coin themselves, but if you ever wonder why the lights are flickering at your neighbor's house and their electric <laughs> meter is running like this in circles, it probably means they've got the computing power and they're mining coins. You know, because I don't know how to answer that because that part's not my business. All I can think about, Scott, is think about the poor guy who bought two pizzas for 20,000 Bitcoin back in the day. We brought I that mean, up, yeah. What's he thinking when he's watching our television program right now? Right, right. So it's like paying for your pizza in gold. It's going to fluctuate in price. That's what people have to really understand. So if, if you could get a price for your pizza in gold and you paid for it, and then suddenly gold shot up in, in value, uh, that was probably a bad purchase, right? And to your mining question, I had a kid uh, who was a, a, a rocket scientist that worked for me at the, on the floor of the Board of Trade probably about – I don't know, maybe 10 years ago by now, but he, 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 he got all our computers on the floor of the Board of Trade to mine Bitcoin with the algorithm that he, pro, you know, he programmed. While, so it would be working on mining Bitcoin for 24-7, even while we run on the floor. And by the end of his, his stay with us, he was there only for the summer. He was probably there three, minutes, three months. But he was able to mine a fraction of a Bitcoin, which had a value by the time he left us and went back to the University of Illinois. So... There are guys out there, like you said, your next door neighbor's lights will be flickering. It does take a lot of power and some computing, but there, there will be a time, they think it's going to be around 2040, that you can't mine any more Bitcoin. They are f fixed. It'll be finite, and it will be you know, like trading gold. It will like paying your bills with gold. If suddenly gold went down in value, well, that was a good buy. If suddenly gold went up in value, you wasted it on those two pizzas, correct? No, that's exactly right. And I think, you know, really what's probably deserved at some time, Scott, is to have a much better discussion about 
blockchain, yes. have a better, more thorough discussion as to where this entire concept started in the first place, yeah. how it morphed and changed really in its purview over the last 15 years to become so incredibly mainstream. Because I think investors, those who are storing value and those who are trading, all will be better served having a more intelligent view yes. of what virtual currency really is and what it is not. So we're not just simply picking names out of a hat because it looks like everyone's favorite dog. You know what I'm referring to. I get, I get you. Perfect stuff. And you're, thank you very much for having that chat. It's hard to do in six minutes. You're right. We needed about 60 minutes. But anyway, you did a great job. Thank you very much, Greg. See you again next week. Craig Bellano, he's the co-founder, CEO of the Wealth Management Group in Chicago. All right, by now you